Okay, I think I've explained this a thousand different ways. However, photography channels on YouTube keep posting this nonsense. Oh, larger sensors gather more light. No, in fact they don't. Sensors don't work like picture windows. Well, sure, a larger picture window lets in more light. FX sensor here, DX sensor down here. No, they don't. Sensors don't work like picture windows, okay? Exposure is per unit area, not per total area. You see this large FX sensor? Okay, I have a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second, right? Let's say an aperture of f4. Okay, now I'm going to block off half of this sensor, okay? I'm going to stick some duct tape in, this, in the camera, which you should never do, right? Then I'm going to take another picture. 1 100th of a second, f4. Exact same exposure, right? Remember, exposure is gain and time. Gain and time. Gain is of two natures. Aperture and native gain on the sensor. Okay? They make things really, really simple. Really simple. Generally speaking, however, it's not always the case. Larger sensor have larger eyeballs on them, right? Kind of like nocturnal animals have those huge, bulging, black eyeballs they can see in the dark. Right? 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 Okay, same shutter speed, same aperture. I'm going to block off half the sensor, take the exact same shot again. What do you think happens to the exposed part over here? What do you think happens? What do you think happens? Okay, now, I won't, the sensor's half as big now. What do you think happens? <coughs> Nothing changes. This exposed part looks exactly the same as the prior picture exposing the whole sensor. Do you get me? Do you feel me? Exposure is per unit area, not per <whistles> total area. Remember that. Next time someone tells you larger sensors gather more light, go, Ahem, excuse me, sir. Exposure is per unit area, not per total area. Okay? Really, really simple. Isn't it simple? Kind of like the way when you drive from the state of Rhode Island into the state of Connecticut. Connecticut's a lot bigger, isn't it? More sunlight does not fall on your head when you cross the border from Rhode Island to Connecticut. Does it? Does it? No, does not. Exposure is gain and time. Well, what about, what about this little thing here called ISO? No. Exposure has nothing to do. ISO has nothing to do with exposure. Well, sure it does. ISO is part of the exposure triangle. No, it isn't. Because ISO in digital, okay, is not film grain. Film grain, this would be like 200 speed. Uh, yeah, this would be like 400 speed film as far as the uh, halide granulation on the film. And this would be uh, like, uh, say, 3200 speed film. ISO in digital has nothing to do with exposure. It is applied gain. If you don't believe me, look up the words ISO invariance. ISO invariance. If you don't know what ISO invariance is, you absolutely should know what ISO invariance is. Uh, yeah, my handwriting sucks. ISO invariance, right? Means I can take the same shot at ISO 200, exact same shot again at ISO 400, if I process them the same in post, they'll both look exactly the same. Exactly right. ISO invariance. Right. So, here's the bone of contention. And this is where stupid people and stupid people are... I see stupid people. They're everywhere. Stupid people got confused. Since, as is a general rule... Here, we can take a look over here. Mm -hmm, uh-huh, yeah. See, the 51 megapixel Canon 5DSR. See what the pixel pitch on is? Pixel pitch, let's just call those... The photo site eyeballs. The pixel pitch, here's an exception on the Canon 5DSR with a 4.14 micrometer pixel pitch is pretty damn close to the eyeballs on a DX sensor. It means while we have a FX sensor here, it has the dynamic range ability of a DX sensor. That's why a lot of people that bought the 51 megapixel Canon go, oh my god, this is a high megapixel camera, but under not so awesome lighting conditions, it has the dynamic range especially for shadow detail recovery, like a DX sensor. And that is the reason for that. This is what we call an exception. Right, an exception. Now, let's take the Nikon D7100, D7200, exact same sensor. 3.93 micrometers. Fuji people, 
Fuji X-T2, the 24 megapixel Fuji X-T2 sensor, 3.93 micrometers, pixel pitch, photo sights, Nikon D4, oh my god, they're huge and honking, 7.3 micrometers, huge, that's not the end of the story, there's another layer to it, okay, I'm going to make this really, really simple, simple, <sighs> look closely, I'm going to tell you the secret, okay, you see this thing up here? Ah, it says SNR firmware, SNR firmware, signal to noise ratio firmware. Nikon D750 sensor is exactly the same sensor as an Nikon D610. Exactly. Well, that can't be because the Nikon D610 doesn't have anywhere near the low light performance, high ISO performance of the D750. <laughs> yeah, because what that is is the magic after the sensor. That's what we call 80 converters in SNR firmware. Signal processing. More advanced signal processing. In other words, the D610 was like an orange crusher could only squash out about 95% of the juice. Right? D750 was a higher orange crusher. It could squash out 95% of the juice. Right? Efficiency. Kind of like the way modern cars can run on the same amount of gas and yet get a lot better mileage. Same principle. So not everything is about, especially in digital photography, is about gain in time. It's also about SNR firmware and 80 converters. Efficiency, the big E efficiency. E, the big magic. E, native gain, native time. Okay, set shutter speed. Shutter speed is a shutter speed is a shutter speed. Right, right, film, digital, yep, no difference. Time is time is time. Gain. Aperture. That has not changed from film to digital, has it? Nope, 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 nope. Now we have something different. We have sensor gain, which is kind of analogous to film grain. Huge old halide crystals sitting on like ISO uh, 3200 film. I mean, give you some grainy pictures. Really grainy. It's got some big old honking crystals on the film. Looks grainy. Yeah, but it could work at a smaller interval of time. Yeah, everything is gain in time. But it is also post sensor, SNR firmware, and 80 converters, which is the big e efficiency, efficiency. So, by the way, same thing applies down here. Most DX sensors, most DX sensors, okay, have tiny little eyeballs. Little bitty eyeballs. So, what does that mean? Let me grab my pad. What is the Nikon D500 pixel pitch, which I didn't write down? That is the pixel pitch I should have written down, but didn't. Oh my god, you're so unprepared. I'm not unprepared. There we go. Nikon D500. I couldn't remember it offhand. So, okay. 4.2 micrometers. D500. And the one camera I wanted to include on here, I forgot to. That is a basically a 21 megapixel. Okay? Okay. Interestingly, I was unprepared. I forgot to write down the Nikon D500. 4.2 micrometers. 21 megapixels. Nikon D5. Also a 21 megapixel camera. 6.4 micrometers. 4.2, 6.4. 21 megapixels, 21 megapixels, right? DX sensor, full frame sensor. 6.4 micrometers. Huger eyeballs. Exposure is per unit area, not per total area. The big mistake that all the dumb people out there made, dumb, dumb, is they think that larger sensors gather more light. No, they don't. They do not. All exposure is gain in time. The truth, however, is, is that since most, here's an exception where it's not the case, 5 DSR, 51 megapixels at 4.14 micrometers, extremely close to DX, basically the same as DX, which is why it doesn't have great dynamic range. It's like, well, it's a really high megapixel camera. It's like, that's great. If you can apply a lot of uh, strobe light, or ambient light, get good saturation, that's awesome. But, 
since the 5DSR, a 51 megapixel camera, has a 4.14 micrometer pixel pitch, its dynamic range, especially for shadow detail, ain't so good. But this is the reason why people think full frame sensors gather more light because it's bigger. No, it's not because it's bigger, but because in really, really dumbed down simple terms, the eyeballs on your full frame sensor are much bigger than the ones on your DX. They'd be like the eyeballs on a, uh, ever seen a, uh, a ground mole when it peeks its head out of the dirt? You ever seen it got tiny little beady eyes? You know, don't really need their eyeballs, yeah. FX sensor, like the gigantic eyeballs on a nocturnal animal, a marsupial, a owl, huge, huge eyeballs. Meaning, those larger eyeballs, given a period of time, given a gain, i.e. aperture, as a native gain for better shadow detail information for extraction in post-processing. So, larger sensors do not gather more light because exposure is per unit area, not per total area. You see, you take two identical shots, get this through your head, two identical shots, right, 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 okay. Except on the second shot, you block off half the sensor. Let's just say you block off 90% of the sensor on the second shot. What do you think happens to the image over here that is exposed on the sensor? What do you think happens? Huh? huh? It's exactly the same. The eyeballs of a hyaw don't give a damn about the eyeballs of a hyaw. Okay? A picture window does let in more light. Okay? But your sensor does not work like a bucket or a picture window. Okay? You stick out if this is a kiddie pool, right? This is a huge kiddie pool. If I stick this out in the rain, a huge kiddie pool, and this is a bucket, okay? I got a bucket here that's empty and one of those plastic Walmart kiddie pools, and I stick it out in a rainstorm, and I go out, and I measure two inches of water in the kiddie pool. You know, one of those eight-foot-wide kiddie pools? Two inches of water, right? Right! 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 How much water do you think I'm going to measure in the bucket? Same rainstorm. Two inches here of rainwater. Gigantic kiddie pool. How much rainwater is going to fall here? Same damn thing. Two inches. Two inches. Two inches. Two inches. Two inches. Exposure. Gain in time. Native gain. What's native gain? Huge eyeballs. Little bitty eyeballs. Huge eyeballs. Little bitty eyeballs. Huge eyeballs. Little bitty eyeballs. Here's an exception. Canon 5DSR. Huge sensor. Little eyeballs. Did I dumb it down enough? Did I dumb it down enough? Did I? Did I? I hope I did. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't know how I could dumb it down any more than that. I don't know how. I don't know how. And by the way, every professional light meter on earth, tell this to anybody that tells you otherwise, say, Bigger sensors gather more light! And you go like this. You go, hey, 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 let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm, yeah, I got a professional light meter. Oh, okay, you got a professional saconic light meter? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's your question? Yeah, here's my question. Yeah, what button do you push on that hardcore, expensive professional light meter to choose between FX and DX? Um... Um, let me see. Um, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Does not exist. No. Nowhere on that professional light meter can you choose. Like, I'm going to take a picture with a DX sensor now. I'm going to hit this button to change it. No. Doesn't exist. Okay. I'm pretty sure if your professional light meter does not differentiate between FX sensor and DX sensor, then, <clears throat> yeah, you, you feel me? Do you get me now? Do you get me? Here we go. Now we have solved the riddle of why people wrongly think that FX sensors gather more light. They don't gather more light, but they generally do, with exceptions, have bigger eyeballs on them. Yeah, bigger eyeballs. Big, gigantic versus tiny little eyeballs. <laughs> and there's the truth of photography. And by the way, some of the top 10 photography channels on YouTube don't know this information. 
Why? 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 Yeah, exactly. That's right, girlfriend. Thanks for being drop me a or two. Send me a box of shortbread cookies. Or tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Bye.